God bless you and what wonderful, wonderful worship as the worship team was singing that last song. I thought about that song and every Jewish family every day prays those scriptures from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Literally, Jewish families place their hands upon their children and they pray that blessing. And as we continued to sing the song, it said something very powerful. It said Psalms 56 and 9. And here's what Psalms 56 and 9 says. It says, God is for me. And I want you to know today, it may seem like the world's against you. It may seem like your world's falling apart. But I just came by to tell you today that God is for you. God's not an angry God up in heaven wanting to get even with you. God's not mad at you. God's not angry with you. God loves you. And God is for you. And God has a great plan for your life. And God will never leave you nor forsake you. And God loves you unconditionally. I just came by to tell you today that God is for you. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited about the message. I'm, I, I can't hardly wait to get into it. And uh, I want you to uh, look on with me. Our scripture reading is found in Acts chapter 27, verses 22 through verse 25. This is what the Bible says. And now I exhort you. And by the way, folks, during these days, that's what we ought to be doing. We ought to, there's enough doom and gloom. There's enough despair. There's enough fear. I, I really believe we ought to exhort one another to be of good cheer. For there should be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. Paul said, for there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Let us pray. Jesus, I cannot. You never said I could. You can. You always said you would. But as Charles Spurgeon would walk to the pulpit, he would say to himself, I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit. And God, I believe in the Holy Spirit. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to us and through us today. I'm in an empty room, God. But Lord... I'm not empty inside because I have your spirit and I have your anointing and I need your spirit and I need your anointing more than I need anything else. So God, would you speak to us and through us? Lord, I pray that you'll meet the hearts of people everywhere they're listening. And for all you do, we're going to praise you. For I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to take a few moments and I want to talk to you about what to do in a storm. What to do in a storm. Monday morning, about 2.30 in the morning, I was awakened by a weather alert. And I immediately woke Barbara up and I said, Barbara, we, we need to get up. Perhaps we even need to go to the basement because we're in the line of a tornado. What I didn't realize at that time, early that morning, that tornadoes had ravished the southeastern United States. What I didn't realize that people's homes and people's lives had been devastated. The storm literally came through the southeastern United States and even, even came to the state of Georgia. And eight people in Georgia lost their lives. The, the devastation was great. In our area, the storm hit Thomaston, uh, Yatesville, Georgia, near Thomaston, and literally picked up a house and uh, moved it to the middle of the road. It was a 
devastating storm that happened last weekend. And what's, what, what, what's so ironic? I'm, I'm preaching today and uh, the, the thunder is in the background. I, I'm preaching today and the lightning is flashing. I'm preaching today and I hear the rain on the roof and we have another forecast of, of storms. You know, there are 195 countries, 195 countries in our world. What's interesting is the United States has more tornadoes than any other country. More tornadoes than any other country. We average 1,000, 1,274 tornadoes every year. And most of the time when we have tornadoes, when we have these storms, it's during this season. It's during the spring of the year. Now, here's what I know. People are listening all over the nation and all over the world. And you may say, Pastor, Pastor, where I'm at, the weather is wonderful. And, and I'm grateful for that. But you know what I know? Every one of us are in the middle of a storm. Yeah, every one of us. You know, sometimes I used to say, you're either in a storm, you just got out of a storm, or you're going into a storm. But that's not the case right now. Because every one of us are in the middle of the coronavirus storm. Every one of us are in the middle of the COVID-19 storm. And it's affecting us all in different ways. Some people, it's affecting them physically. Physically. They're struggling. They're, they're battling. And I want you to know as a pastor and as a church, our hearts go out for those people that have been diagnosed with the coronavirus. And we're prayerfully praying for you. It's impacted other people emotionally. Some people are living in fear. I mean, literally, they've got a, they've got a fear mentality. They've, they're, they're, they're constantly, they're, they're scared to death of correct, contracting COVID-19. Some people, it's relationally, it's, it's socially. Many, many people, many, many people. It's financially. 22 million Americans, 22 million Americans, up to this point, up to this point, have lost their jobs. I hear reports every day of people losing their jobs. So I want to say the coronavirus, the corona storm is affecting all of us in some way, some more than others. And as I say, those of you that it's affecting you directly, our hearts, my heart, my heart goes out to you. People that are losing their jobs, my heart goes out to you. I, I feel for you, and I want you to know as a church, we're doing everything we can. We're doing everything we can to assist families, to help families with, with resources and other things that we can do to help people during this difficult time. Now, let me, let me give you, folks, because I want to give you some background to the story. The great apostle Paul was on a ship. The ship was sailing from Caesarea to Rome. Caesarea to Rome. And the Bible says they poured it in a place called Crete. And some of you that have been to Greece with me, you've, you've been on the, the journeys of Paul with me, you know that we, we, we port in Crete. There's, there's, a, there's a port there, a place called Crete, the very same place where Paul was. And Paul was here. He was actually a prisoner on this ship. He was a prisoner along with other prisoners, and while the ship ported at Crete, he said to the leaders, he said to the centurion, there was a man who was a centurion, and his role was he was responsible for Paul and the other prisoners on the ship. And Paul said to this centurion, kind of the guard, the keeper, he said, we need to stay right here at Crete because if we leave Crete, we're going to get into a bad storm. But the scripture tells us that this centurion went to the owner of that ship. And he listened to the owner of that ship and he listened to some other men and he basically said, I'm not going to pay Paul any mind. I'm a, we're going to set sail. We're going to get back on the Mediterranean. We're going to continue our voyage to Rome. But I want you to know something, folks. They got into a storm like none other. 
They got into a storm that literally everything was dark. Everything looked hopeless. Everything looked destitute. Everything looked like, it looked like there was no, no light at the end of the tunnel for 14 days. Now, let me say something. If you live long enough, you're going to get in some storms. You're going to get in some storms. I love what Jerry Falwell said. I read this. Dr. Jerry Falwell, who passed in 2007. But he said this. He said, from time to time, stars will fall out of your heaven. You said, Pastor, you're preaching to me. You're preaching to me because stars have fallen out of my heaven. And Dr. Falwell was right. From time to time, stars will fall out of your heaven. Your world will collapse around you. He said, strength and stability are born in storms of adversity. Your reaction and response to trouble during the hours of suffering will determine the extent that God can use you. Now, we've established the fact that we're in a storm. So what I want to challenge you to do, I want to take five things from the text, I want to take five things from the Word of God that we all ought to do while we're in this storm. The first thing I'd say to every one of us, let's reaffirm our faith in God. Let's reaffirm our faith in God. You know what was interesting? If you look at verse 30 of Acts chapter 27, some of those guys, 276 men on the ship, but some of them were about to flee out of the ship. They wanted to jump overboard. And let me say something. Storms can cause you to jump overboard. Storms can cause you to do things that you shouldn't do. Storms can cause you to turn to things that you shouldn't turn to. Storms can cause you to turn to people that you shouldn't turn to. Storms can cause you to go places that you shouldn't go to. And some of these men, they started to base, basically jump out of the ship. But Paul said to them in verse 31, he said, guys, except you abide in the ship, you're not going to be saved. Let me tell you something. You say, Pastor, I'm in a storm. What, what word does God's word have, to me, have for me? Abide in the ship. Stay in the ship. Reaffirm your faith in God. In John chapter 6, the Bible says from this time many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. What happened? They were walking with Jesus and storms came. Storms that came to their lives and they decided they didn't want to walk with Jesus anymore. But look what the Bible says. Then Jesus said unto the twelve, Are you also going to go away? Are you going to go away? Then Simon Peter answered, Lord, whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And look what they said. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. What were they saying? They were saying, we're going to reaffirm our faith in God. We're going to reaffirm our faith in God. Let me tell you something. God has done me nothing but good all the days of my life. And even though we're in the midst of the storm, I want to go on record as saying today, I'm going to reaffirm my faith in God. I'm going to reaffirm my faith in God. There's nowhere else to go. I'm going to keep my eyes upon Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. See, I've been through enough to know he'll be enough. And I'm going to reaffirm my faith. And I challenge you to reaffirm your faith in God. I, I love what Charles Spurgeon said. Let, let, let me tell you, folks, this right here is so good. Charles Spurgeon said, The God of the past has blotted out your sin. The God of the present 
makes all things work together for your good. And the God of the future will never leave nor forsake you. I want to say you may be in the midst of a storm, but reaffirm your faith in God. Let me tell you the second thing to do. Readjust your priorities. <laughs> Readjust your priorities. Did they do that? Well, yes, they did. Because if you look at verse 18, they were lightening the ship. <laughs> they, were, they were throwing things overboard. If you look at verse 19, uh, they threw the tackle overboard. It, 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 it was not going to be, uh, it, it was no longer going to be needed because they were in survival mode. If you look at verse 38, they threw the wheat overboard. Because what were they doing? They were readjusting what was really important. And I pray that during this season that we especially as Americans, we readjust our priorities and we realize what's really important. Let me tell you what's important. is your relationship with God and your relationships with others. What's really important is your relationship with God and, and your relationships with others. Readjust your priorities. You know, there's a verse in Psalms 46. Psalms 46 says, be still and know that I'm God. You know, I wonder, folks, we're stiller than we've ever been. We're at home more than we've ever been. We're with less people than we've ever been with before. I wonder if it's taken us being still to know that he's God. I, I wonder if God's had to remove everything. I, I wonder if God's had to remove everything. I, I, I wonder if God said, no, 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 no. They, they worship everything but me. So I'm going to remove everything so they can get their eyes upon me. As I researched, be still and know that I'm God. That be still simply means take your hands off. Take your hands off. Many times we're control freaks. We want to control everything. But God said, you've got some circumstances right now that's beyond your control. I, 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 I'm going to force you, almost force you to take your hands off so I can put my hands on and show you that I am God. It's your relationship with God. It's your relationship with others. Yesterday, I preached a precious lady's funeral. She graduated with honors. She went to heaven. Wonderful, wonderful, godly lady. And I looked around, and I saw these people crying. They weren't, they weren't sorrowing as those who have no hope. They were sorrowing because they were going to miss her. But you know what I noticed? There was not a dollar bill that cried at the funeral. I never saw one dollar bill crying. I counted dollars while God counted crosses. I counted gains while he counted losses. I counted my worth by those things gained in store. He sized me up by the scars that I bore. I counted the honors I sought all the degrees. But he counted the hours I spent on my knees. And I never knew until one day by a grave how vain are the things we spend our lives to save. See, there's a couple things. Reaffirm your faith. Readjust your priorities. But there's a third thing I'd say. Revisit your relationships. I believe if we could talk to that centurion, he would say, I should have listened to Paul. Because his words were the most important words. The majority's words weren't the most important. The majority wasn't the most important. It was one man. It was what one man had to say. You know, you know, what, you know what storms do? Storms help us to realize who's really important. See, in prosperity, <laughs> our friends know us. But in adversity, we know our friends. 
and what storms cause you to do, they cause you to revisit the relationships that are really important. That's why each day there's certain people that you want to talk to during the coronavirus because the virus has caused you to revisit those relationships and it's caused you to determine what relationships are really the most important. Dr. James Dobson said, the founder of Focus on the Family, he said, I had a heart attack and almost died. And he said, during it, I literally thought I was dying. And Dr. Dobson said, while I thought I was dying, I asked myself three questions. Question number one, who do I love? It's a pretty good question to ask yourself during this time. Who do I love? But then he said, I moved to question number two. Who really loves me? And then he said, I moved to question number three. Will I spend eternity with the ones that I love? Let me tell you something. Perhaps during this time, you should ask yourself, who do I love? Who really loves me? And will I spend eternity with the ones that I love? When Dr. Dobson asked himself that question, he said, you know, my son, Ryan, I don't know where his spirituality is. I don't know where he is with God. Perhaps when you ask yourself that question, will I spend eternity with the ones I love? Is it a brother that comes to your mind? Is it a sister? Is it a child? Is it your mate? Is it your parents? Is it a close friend? Dr. Dobson said, I really got concerned about Ryan. I started praying for Ryan like I'd never prayed for Ryan before. I started reaching out to Ryan like I'd never reached out to Ryan before. I, I started trying to drop God to Ryan like I'd never dropped God to Ryan before. He said, eventually Ryan became a Christian. And today he's a pastor of a church. During this time, why don't you revisit those relationships? Why don't you revisit those relationships? Determine who's really important. Somebody said, when we go to heaven, we can't take anything to heaven with us. Oh, that's so wrong. You can take people with you. You can take that daughter with you. Take that son with you. Take that wife with you. Take your parents. Take your siblings. Take good friends. There's a fourth thing that we ought to do during a storm, and that is re-examine your thinking. Re-examine your thinking. See, I, I, I love verse 22 when Paul said, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. <laughs> I love what he said in verse 25. Be of good cheer. Let me tell you something. If a person's diagnosed with the coronavirus or they've been exposed to somebody, you know what they have to do? They have to quarantine. They have to get alone because they don't want to spread the virus. Let me tell you something, folks. I don't want to spread the coronavirus, certainly. But I don't want to spread the fear virus. I, I, I don't want to spread the fear virus. I want to spread the cheer virus. I, I, I don't want to spread the fear virus. I want to spread the cheer virus. And God over and over and over says, be of good cheer. This is so important, folks. You may be in the storm. You may be in the storm. But don't let the storm get in you. You may be in the storm, but don't let the storm get in you. I thought about Jesus. Jesus uh, goes to the cross. He's crucified. They nailed him to the cross. 
six hours of torture on that cross. But you know the story. They buried him in a borrowed tomb, and three days later, later he arose. <laughs> Rocks and tombs couldn't keep him in. Walls and rooms couldn't keep him out. And the disciples were in a room, and Jesus walks through the wall, <laughs> and he's in the room, and he shows them his nail-scarred hands. He said, guys, I went through it. I went through it. I, I made it to the other side. And guys, I, I, I want you to see the scars. <laughs> but the scars are a reminder that I made it. The scars are a reminder that I made it. And you know what God wants us to do with the scars in our lives? <laughs> God wants us to use those scars as a reminder to tell other people, you can make it. God wants us to use those scars as a reminder to tell other people that you can make it. You say, Pastor, where do you get that? Well, look what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians 1 and 4, who comforteth us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any comfort by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Every scar that you've gone through. Let me tell you something. Ben Carson, who's a pretty sharp guy, he's a brain surgeon. He said 98% of the people who contract corona will survive. 98% of the people who contract this virus will survive. And you know what God's plan is for every one of those people? Is to get to the other side and say, yeah, I've got some scars, but I made it. I've got some scars, and I've made it. You say, Pastor, I've been through a divorce. What does God want me to do? God wants you to say, hey, I've got some scars, but I made it because the Lord brought me through. I went through that physical problem. I've got some scars, but I made it. I went through bankruptcy. I went through betrayal. I've got some scars, but I want you to know, I want you to be of good cheer because you can make it. I say again, you may be in the storm, but don't let the storm get in you. And lastly, <laughs> lastly, there's a, there's a fifth thing I want to encourage you to do. That is, rehearse your testimony. Rehearse your testimony. I want you to know something. I've never known a better time to share Jesus than the day in which we're in. I've never known a more uh, fruitful time to share Jesus than the day in which we're living. See, Paul was on this ship and the men were at their wits end. But Paul knew in Acts 23 and 11, two years prior, God had told Paul, Paul, you're going to make it to Rome. Because you're going to share the gospel with Caesar. Somebody said, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. No, 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 no. If God said it, that settles it whether you believe it or not. If God said an elephant's going to lay an egg, you can get your skillet. Paul said to these men, hey guys, be of good cheer. We're going to make it. Because guys, what you don't know, Jesus Christ came to me. Jesus was that angel, by the way. Jesus Christ came to me. And he said, Paul, you be of good cheer because you're going to make it. And the 275 guys on the ship, they're going to make it too. Now, here's what's so interesting. There were men on this ship that were prisoners. And just as soon as they got to Rome, they were gonna place their heads on chop blocks and they were gonna be killed. But isn't it amazing? God put a man of God on the ship to share Jesus with them. God, God put a man of God to share the plan of salvation with them. 
He said, Pastor, I'm in a storm. But God's put somebody in your path. God's put a church service in your path. God's put a preacher in your path. God's put his word in your path. Today, you may be in the middle of the storm, but God's told you how to handle that storm. Friend, let me tell you something. Sometimes when the storm comes, God calms the storm. But sometimes when the storm comes, God lets the storm rage and he calms me. And today, I want you to know something. God wants to calm you. And you can have peace in your heart. You don't have to have fear in your heart. God sent somebody down your path. God sent a message down your path that you're in this storm. But you can have peace. And you can have forgiveness. You can have joy. You don't have to be troubled on every side. You can be forgiven today. Some of you, you've walked away. You jumped overboard. But I've got good news. You can come back. You can reaffirm your faith. You can reaffirm your faith today. So whether you've never accepted Christ or you've walked away, you can be right with God today. And I'm going to tell you how. Because see, I'm in a sanctuary, I'm in a church, I'm in an auditorium. But I didn't get right with God in an auditorium. I got right with God in my home. And you can make peace with God today in your home, in your car, in your yard, in your boat, wherever you are. At your workplace, you can make peace with God right where you're at, on that airplane, wherever you're at, in that bedroom all by yourself. You can make peace with God right now, my friend. I pray that you will. It's a simple prayer that I just ask you to pray with me. Right where you're at, just bow your head. I'm going to bow my head. And we're going to pray this simple prayer together. You just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. But God, I'm so sorry for my sin. I'm so sorry I want to change. I believe that you died on that cross. You shed your blood for my sin. And I confess all my sin to you right now. Come into my heart, Lord, and forgive me. God, I reaffirm myself to you. Now, thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. Thank you, God, for coming into my life. It took a storm, Lord. (laughs) But I'm grateful in the midst of this storm that you saved me. Thank you, God, for forgiving me. Amen. Now listen to me, friend. The greatest decision you ever make you just made you say well I'd stepped away from the Lord well he he took you back but I want you to do something I promise you it's not for me it's not for our church it's totally for you I want you to reach out to us you have a device it's obvious you have a device you're watching and I want you to reach out to us and say four words I prayed that prayer it you said pastor it's that simple it's that simple I prayed 
that prayer again it's not for me it's not for our church it's for you because when you do that you're going to feel so much better because the Bible tells us to share our faith share what God has done in our lives so right now don't let anything hinder you from I prayed that prayer and I want you to say folks I want I want to say to you as a pastor I am so proud of you thousands watch today but really it was for you it was really for you and I am so proud of you and I can't wait to hear from you